Wait, hold on. Let me just come in there. I'm ready. Yeah, we will. Oh, shit. All right. In... Stop. I do. You got the. Oh. Begin star. Three, two, one. Go. I love Cindy Kim because she gets irritated. Whatever irritates Kim, I like so to funny, do. Mama. <laughs> so I was like, I had to play her song. Two funny mamas. What's with the grin? Shepherd Young Kim. Hey. Um, nigga. Shit. Hey, y'all. Welcome to the podcast. Sherry, are you serious? We're starting to pop. Hey, Beignet is coming in the back door. Can you uh, let him in? And it's, it, and it's the three, one thing is in the bathroom, three things, two things in the and the TV, two things in the TV room, the Apple TV, the lamp, and the TV. All right, or let him in. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. So welcome to the podcast. I'm Kim Whitley. This is uh, Sherry Shepard. Now she decides to clean up. So we've been sitting here the whole time. Now she's taking all her laundry off the bed because she didn't want TMZ to get that shot. But I, now no, she's- I got laundry. Well, say hi to the people. Oh my God, this is so bad. I'm just- <laughs> What is wrong with you? Heard- and I'm holding the mic. I'm holding the mic in my hand. <laughs> Cause I don't want to hear Chris's mouth. Hi, that, Sherry. Yo, you got a lavalier? I got a lot because you had that. Remember, you had a big old mic, and so I got this little mic. I got a little mic because Chris That's said he couldn't hear me. I got a lot on there. I did somebody's <laughs> podcast, and remember when COVID was really, really bad, and people were doing podcasts and getting you on stuff. This is what they sent me. They sent me a ring light. They sent me a lavalier to do their podcast. I was like, "Ooh, this world," and I kept it. I was like, "This is." You didn't give it back. No, I didn't give it back. I tried not to give back own their uh ipads and they computer and their laptops but they said they would come and get it so i was like oh i better not oprah might show up at my Ask door Chris, where are you supposed to put it for maximum volume the lavalier no. you look like you don't know where to put it oh chris knows where to put it chris where i put it <laughs> oh <laughs> you ain't got no finger I... strength uh, I think I think it's the most professional when you hold it like it's a hand like a hand mic. I think that's the best when you hold it like up to the corner of your mouth and like there you hey go. y'all yeah what's welcome up? Hey. to funny mamas how you doing <laughs> sounds like she's, down, Howard Cosell. She sounds it like she's doing a man on the street bit in the on she the does. radio in the seventies <laughs> in the seventies wait look show everybody our shirts I got a Cleveland shirt on I got a Detroit shirt on Detroit look at us. And they're right next to each other. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. I know. Now, mine, says, uh, De- mine says Detroit versus everybody. Wow. That's true. I like that shirt. So, uh, how, Sherry, I haven't seen you in so long. I know I miss you. I literally, I'm just off a plane. I just walked in the door from uh, uh, Detroit. I was there this weekend because uh, for the Sherry show, every week, I have to fly into a different city to like hang with the affiliates with the station that plays the show. So, Mm -hmm. you know, you're trying to create these relationships so that, you know, Oh, that's nice, Chris. Thank you. Uh, Number one new talk show. Where you get the number one from? She's out there on the road putting in work. The number one is from all of the ratings. So of the freshman talk shows, I don't want them to go, Oh, she beat Kelly. And Drew, so it's of the all of the new talk shows that are out. Oh, it says number one new talk show. Fat, you got that? Well, we knew that was going to happen. That's great. That feels good, doesn't it? It feels great. We didn't know nothing. Uh, you, you know, <laughs> like I think the first, um, I think the first week Jennifer Hudson and I were we had the same uh, rating point. And then the second week is when I came in number one. I don't know what the third week and the fourth week will be because we just finished the fourth week. Now we're starting the fifth week of the talk show. So that was very, it was great news. It kind of showed that, you know, what we're doing is working. The audience loves you. That's what I was like, girl, keep getting them ratings. I need me a job, job security, forget that. 
I was like, you know, I was praying and burning candles and doing every kind of things. I was like, Lord Jesus, please let Sherry show work. Please let it be number one, Lord, so I could at least come on once or twice a month and we could be Oprah and Gail. Okay, that was my prayer. Well, my prayer was please. I was using all of God's names. Yahshuaay, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha. <laughs> when I tell you, oh my gosh. Uh, not only that, I was praying that you would come on and get you a spinoff so you could move to New York. I know. Here. And then I had a dream. I did move to New York and I was doing the show uh, with you. I was like on once a week or something like that. And I had to move to New York. and. Um, I put Joshua in the school. I mean, I had, it was a good old drink and I was eating all the uh, pastries. Yeah, I was, that, was, that was crazy. It was a crazy dream. Oh my but I God. Wasn't mad. Like I liked New York. I was like, oh, this is cool. This is, you know, like I didn't have anything because I took my dog, I brought everything, you know, in the house here. I was like, I rented it out. Like I was cool. See, this just yeah. means I think you're going to be in New York with me which I'm severely looking forward to. That's so I'm excited, but you're, you're so busy. Um, and I got to re remind me to do this laundry before we get off this podcast. Cause I got to, these are sheets that go on my bed. So, so you have to wash them. You yeah, I like doing them. laundry. It's cathartic. Huh? I just taught Joshua how to do laundry uh, today. Oh, I mean, how's he doing? He did good. It was, it was, I did, it was easier because even I was like, oh yeah, you just turn it on, you do this, this and that. And, but I'm going to have to have, you know, have him repeat it. I think before I move on to dryer, I think we're going to have to just keep doing laundry. He gets that. He did, He'll he get did it. Good. He'll get it. He Jeffrey does it. his own, except Jeffrey will do, I'll say, Jeffrey, I need to just wash towels. Jeffrey will just put his one towel and his washcloth in the washing machine and start it. And I'll have a whole pile of towels right there and i'm like did you not see all he'll he'll be like yeah i saw it but they're not mine so i gotta teach oh, him unselfishness right. and watch everybody's stuff everyone's you know, but you have you ever thrown like you've been washing joshua's clothes and you threw a pair of your panties in there which joshua see joshua you don't have joshua folding up his own clothes jeffrey folds up his oh, clothes that, no my underwear has been in his drawer he's been mad that's what I'm talking about. I wash my underwear, my stuff, my bras, and everything with Jeffrey's stuff. He gets so mad, Kim, when he's folding up his clothes, and he'll come here with my thongs and be like, these are yours, and throw them on the bed. Stop washing your stuff with my stuff. Oh, no. See, that's why I got Joshua now going to get me a good bra. Joshua, run in that top drawer and grab mama that good bra. He's like, which one? I said, it's smooth, and it got the little flop, because I don't want his. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. I'm telling you, I don't like wasting no water. I'm like, if I can wash myself with yours, so be it. But he don't right, like it. Right. When you say out. wasting water, do you not flush the toilet till it's been used about three, four, five times? No, Kim. I, I flush the toilet nope. every time. That's what my girlfriend okay. Mari said. She said, especially at night, everybody gonna pee in the toilet. She said, don't flush the toilet. First of all, mm. it's gonna wake everybody up, but then you save on water. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, that's disgusting. Sense. That's disgusting. <laughs> when you tell Mari Morrow, uh, Miss the Actress, who you've seen in Booty Call and all these other movies, that that's disgusting. And I flush the toilet. I'm not one of them. One. I don't. Every time. Every they single time. Know, there is a saying if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's, wait, if it's brown, if it's brown, let, let it go down. down. Yes. If it's mellow, if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. That's how you save water. And we're okay, in a this drought. Is disgusting. Uh, first of all, the conversation. And I, I and I'm gonna tell you, I don't, just, I don't, I take a shower every day, probably twice a day. I don't wait no three, four days, and I flush don't, the don't toilet. Don't try to shave. I've gotten better. Go ahead. That's I. I can't even believe you don't flush the toilet. It's disgusting. You tell okay. Mario. Oh, oh, your story about Tom Jordan was funny on your show. Okay, first of all, all right. I told a story on the show about Tom Joyner. Um, but it involved both of us. So it wasn't my story, it was our story. And I told the story about, and people who follow us on Two Funny Mamas, they already know this story because it's actually 
uh, Chris has a clip of us talking about it on stage, but about Tom Jordan took us on a shopping spree to Louis Vuitton. And I actually showed the picture, Kim, because remember, John Murray told us not to post it on Instagram because he didn't want people like people to try to rob, rob us. Uh -huh. And shortly after, Kim Kardashian got robbed in Paris, France, remember? So he but told us do not different. post it. So that was the first time I was able to post that picture post of all the Louis Vuitton. But it was just, listen, the truth is this. If I would have posted the picture, they would have known the truth. It's just the boxes and the bags and nothing at all. <laughs> I be going to my friend's house, tell me, you need that bag? I'm going to need that bag. I put it in my closet so it looks good. Chanel, ain't nothing in Well, there. the one beautiful thing was those boxes were filled with Louis Vuitton things. They were. And that is, and people were commenting. They were saying, our fans really listened. They were saying, oh, that's why David called you and Kim, David Arnold, our late beautiful friend, David Arnold, Kim's brother. And they said, that's why David Arnold called both you guys and wanted one of those Louis Vuitton purses. Oh, that's right. They remember. They remember. And that's why he did call when David called and said, hello, I know you got some bags that you're not using because Tom Jordan got them for you. So I want to get one for Julie. He did. Like we had a store. What's wrong like with we that? had a store and we said, David, it means more if you go and buy it yourself. And he goes, why would I do that when you have Louis Vuitton purses? It makes no sense. Oh, no, it was so funny. And you was all animated when you did the snatch and grab. I was screaming. And I, I mean, I laugh at stuff, but I was cracking up at how you presented the story. I was dying. It was hilarious. And they showed the and video. And we was just as took. chubby. We was just as chubby. That's what was yeah. making me laugh. Was, we was both look like we ate Tom Jordan. That shows you how long we've been friends. We done been friends through thick and thin. <laughs> yeah, but thinking back to that, um, you know, I ha I was running out of time because they were saying to me, Sherry, you got 30 seconds. And I, I really had it. to do the question quick. So when we go on tour and we do stand up, we'll have to retell the story together because we got to get your input and my input together. But I'm going to tell you, um, even thinking about that day and Tom texted me, he said he loved the story. <laughs> oh, good, good. But you like, I still have a, um, it's not, it's downstairs, but I, you know, because we were just snatching and grabbing stuff, we got gifts for people. Like I didn't keep, people want to know what I did with stuff. I didn't keep a lot of stuff. I gave a lot of stuff away because I just was getting so much stuff. Um, I think I still got the black Louis Vuitton bag because we both got one. Yes, we still have that. In my closet. I can't find the wallet. Where is my bag? You know, I'm glad you said that because I said, I knew I used to carry a bag around. I couldn't remember <laughs> what the bag was. Girl, my Louis Vuitton bag, I need to take it to the Louis They need to shine it up. It is just as dusty. Because you always wore it. Like, I, I wore mine on special case. You wore your, you took that bag everywhere. It'd be on the floor. Yeah. It'd be everywhere. Yeah, it's kind of, oh, yeah, it's kind of bad. So You're take right. it to them because they'll, they'll shine it up for you. I can't yeah. find my wallet, though. The wallet that went with the purse. I have no idea. Oh. Yeah, there's little oh. things. But you were getting, look, you was out of control. You was grabbing glasses and keychains and scarves. Like you were getting all kind of little stuff. And I was saying, Sherry, don't do that. Don't do that. Remember, I was like, you can't do all that. He was like, he said, we can get what we want. That's why I showed the video when I when it got that suitcase. And you took that yeah. video of me because I really, I was having a panic attack. Um, but I was taking a little stuff because I didn't have time to say to her, can I see this purse, this ostrich purse in every color? I didn't have time to do that. I needed, we only had an hour because the store was going to close. So I it just needed close. to pull as much as I could. And that's what I said. I didn't say it on, on, um, on the show, but I wish we would have had two different sales clerks because see, we were both using the same oh. one and she had to divide her time between us both, which was, <laughs> that meant we didn't get as much. You're right. Thinking, but now we know for next time. Now I got to tell the story of when Tom took us to Christian Louboutin for oh, Valentine's yeah, that, Day when he flew no, us out to Miami. And that whole story of how, that yes, this uh, is uh, a, uh, oh, 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 my, oh my goodness. Oh my God. Look at us just as chubby. <laughs> we look 
un- we look unhealthy. We look. We do. Thanks, Chris. We look unhealthy. Oh my God! It looks like we just eating fried foods and just smoking cigarettes. That wig just sits differently on me. Thirty pounds more. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. Great work, ladies. You know. Very fun. I will tell the story. This is the one great thing, Kim, and we're gonna move to. Remember you. they didn't have any, Remember they didn't have no, my shoes in the any sizes. In the my side. feet were too big for Louis Vuitton, But go ahead. We uh, Tom and I'm gonna tell it on the show. It just has to come up organically because sometimes right. when we be doing hot topics. Like it's that's not like that was a story I wanted to tell. We were talking about Garcelle Bouvet getting a thirteen thousand dollar Birkin bag. And so I, it, it made me think of, oh, I wouldn't pay 13000 but if somebody buys it for me. And so those right. things kind of will spark something. And um, the thing that I love about having a talk show is I get to tell these stories that I've never really told, except maybe sometimes on stage or to other people of, you know, at this age is so many things that have happened in my life as yours. You know, you, oh, geez, your stories, Kim, when you have your show. You, you, they gonna run you out of town. <laughs> I was like, by the time you, I get my show, I'm gonna be like, Sherry, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got your stories. I don't have to feed them to you right. like Sierra no diversion. You got all my stories. <laughs> but there was a story, and we're gonna get to you, Kim. Of uh, Tom flew Kim and I out to his compound in Miami. He lived in one of the most affluent blocks, like he lived next door to Tommy Hilfiger. And he had a big mansion and he flew his booze, Kim and I, to his private compound. And he had on the beach, we did pictures, I love you, Kim and Sherry. And he had a private pool, a private beach. And he told us he's going to take us shopping on Valentine's Day. And that whole, it was just such a it was a a fiasco, wonderful day. (laughs) It was just and Kim couldn't get to truncate it. We were gonna get the shoes to take back to get the money back. But all they had, because Kim wears a size 17 shoe, the same size as Shaq, um, there were no shoes in stock in her size. Kim, what is wrong with us? Good grief. How much did we eat a day? What in the world? And I thought I was thin. Look how big my head is. I, I mean, how you gain idea. weight in your skull? And why is my hair like ABC <laughs> Eyewitness News? Hair? <laughs> what is going on with that bob? I still got that wig. Yeah, I wore look, at the the meat, look at the meat coming through the, the holes in the jeans. Stop it. <laughs> I bet you them jeans you got on got this smooth part in the thigh where your thighs be rubbing together. <laughs> yeah, oh no. It's white. It's white right there. It ain't even it's here. white no. right there. Oh my oh, goodness. Wow. And then my dress is what they wear at Disney when you go to the restaurants to eat. <laughs> yes. Girl, look at my little chubby fingers. Look like sausages. <laughs> <laughs> it just all the way around. I don't know what was going on with me. Wow. But I got, I had on 17 pounds of hair. Did you see that? Wow. Wonder why I'm bald. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I can't. I can't with you. Oh, I missed you so much. I you know. are so busy. I want to congratulate uh-huh. you on your show. Kim is about to premiere on Audible that you yeah. co-created with Lena Wave. You're an executive producer of the show, Kim. It's going to be on Audible, y'all. Look at you, an Audible original. Oh, Audible original and- coming out October 20th. So you can't order it yet, you guys, but what you can do is if you go to audible.com, you can listen to a sample and it's just like a sitcom on Audible. So when you're driving to work, you will get to laugh at this show that Kim Whitley and Lena Waithe created. And And it literally, huh? Kim Whitley, Sherry Shepard's right next to my name. Uh, What is that, Carter Lee Hamilton? David A. Arnold, Lena Wade, Cynthia Arrivo, Jennifer Lewis, Jess Hilarious, amongst yes. other people who yeah. came in. And it's literally Kim's life um, that Lena wrote of her being a struggling actress, 
uh, raising a child who she adopted, uh, who was eight years old, and never knowing if the mother's going to come back, take her child, how but she lived. But it's, it's pretty, it's, but it's, it's, it's oh. loosely based because it's a lot of fiction in there. We, yes. It's pretty funny. It's, it is loosely based, of course, all my life, but it, it's pretty ridiculous. It is, it's because so... David Arnold plays such a funny character. Big T, my ex, he got, he's a one hit wonder. Girl, he was so hilarious because especially with his daddy being, you know, original of the OJs, you know, he he loved playing that character. So uh, on Audible, uh, October 20th, please, everyone. Uh, get so the, you can, uh, Audible original. I believe you can get a notification, y'all. Please go to audible.com to sign up. And I believe you can get a notification when Kim's, when it does drop, but it does drop October 20th. You can listen to it in the car. It's just like a sitcom. And I'm going to tell you, and I play her best friend slash manager, but I'm a security <laughs> guard. <laughs> yes, it's the funniest thing. And Sherry, you are so funny. It's so funny. I mean, but so you funny. know, Lena wrote such a rich story. So everybody who comes in, Jennifer Lewis is funny. Kim Coles yeah. is funny. Yes. Um, David A. Arnold is hysterical. So everybody in your life in this audible is really funny. So I'm sorry, Jeff. <laughs> I'm on the floor. He's um we're in a is what? See, this is what happens. Say he told me I'm not that funny. Is that the man, Did the myth, the legend, Jeffrey? Did Jeffrey say we wasn't that funny? Yeah. Jeffrey, don't make me fly to New York. He said, All right, okay. Is it uh, awesome? <laughs> tell him I tell him I said what's up. <laughs> I'm not oh telling God. him nothing. I, this is what I get when I get back out Why the plane. Why are you throwing coffee on me? Now you got a big spot above your breast. I know, because I keep spilling the coffee on my chest. What is wrong with you, Auntie Kim? <laughs> Auntie Kim. We talked about that today. People calling you Auntie. Uh, me and, Do you uh, like it when people call you Auntie? Wait. Oh, no. This is oh, an article. Man. This picture right here of Kim looking so beautiful. I hope you got to keep that dress is from an article about her show, Kim, on Audible from Essence.com, which is out now, I think. Kim, you look gorgeous. Oh, thank you. That was a great uh, photo shoot uh, for uh, the, the, you know, for the press for uh, Kim. And it's K-Y-M for our listeners. Make sure it's my name when you look up Audible. Oh, uh, I was very excited. I've been waiting on this to come out. It's been- Look at you and Lena Waithe. Oh, Lena. My niece, that's what I call her. My niece, look at Can her. Can I ask you one thing about Lena? Uh -huh. Why she don't never smile in her picture? Because she's a gangster. That's why I say Lena is a gangster. Because she works hard and she wants people to know she's serious. But she does smile. Like, if you see this when we do the interview, she's cracking up. Oh, I can make Lena smile. Trust and believe. We crack up you together. We Lena, do. let me tell y'all, so when Kim was doing this audible, Lena is a hard taskmaster. Yeah, Lena don't play. Play. Still Lena, no you, know, you know Kim got ADHD, so which drives Lena through the roof because she's <laughs> trying to corral Kim and she'll get on Kim to get her together. And then, so this is what I love about Lena. Lena was like, you see the way Sherry did it, Kim? You see the way oh. how she... <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. She was like, see how Sherry did it, Kim? That's how you need to do it. Smooth, professional. I was like... Can't be like, oh, okay, okay, and go right back to doing whatever she was doing. <laughs> what I, I do. But I, I have to tell you, I had a lot of fun because it was just our voices. So we were reading a script. The little boy who played your son was just beautiful. Carter um, was great. And, it and was Lena, a great experience. And you know, I love this. Lena has been uh, on this project for a couple of years, pushing this through. Um, when it was over at Amazon and they didn't do it as a sitcom, Lena was like, took it, you know, Amazon and Audible, you know, the same kind of company, but she's like, we got to get this done. And, and she stuck with it. And, you know, with her name, you know, it really pushed it through. And I'm very excited and very proud of this project. Well, I'm really hoping that people will see it even from hearing it and mm -hmm. see, wow, this is a show because I would love to see it on the air. It was so funny. Um, you doing it. Jess Hilarious plays the uh, little boy's um, blood mother, birth yeah. mother. Birth mother. Blood mother. Birth blood mother. Is funny. <laughs> and and he was she's so funny. Fun. Mm -hmm. She's fun. And Kim Coles plays Kim's uh, therapist. It's just, it's so many really she funny characters. So, 
Uh, Cynthia Erivo plays uh, the, the Joshua's, I mean, not Joshua, J Trevante's, the little boy's uh, therapist. And, and Cynthia Erivo, you know, she has a British accent and, she's, and she speaks so lovely. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, you can imagine all these characters. Uh, so it's going to be great. Yes. I'm very proud of you, and I, I literally cannot wait to hear it. And I'm telling our fans and our our listeners. Because our fans gonna... got us an award, so I know they can make Kim Audible Podcast number one. Say what? 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 Number one. Oh, oh, oh. Well, this is how I like looking. Yeah, that's a that's a tight look. Who did your that's face very... for that one? Yeah, I like that one. Is. Kim Whitley and Sherry Shepard, two funny mamas. Yeah. Sophisticated. Look at us. We look like we we mean big. Look like we both got master degrees. Master's degrees. <laughs> <laughs> it do. Oh my gosh, girl. Yeah. Well, that's yes, because we're the, the the winners of the NAACP Image Awards. So if our fans could get us that NAACP Image Award, they certainly can uh, order Kim, K-Y-M, on audible.com and put you at number one, because that's what that's we funny. need, everybody. We need Kim to be number one, because number, number one, one is the number. It's all about the ratings. It's all about the listeners. That's the name of the game here yeah. in Hollywood. So please sign October up to 20th. Audible. Yes. October 20th is when it drops. We're going to keep saying it, and we sure would appreciate you guys telling somebody. But I guarantee you're going to like it, because if you love Kim, you follow Kim on anything she does, it's the same thing, but and you you're on there, and you're in the. It's crazy, and it's Sherry doing one of them stupid characters that y'all <laughs> love when she does them on the show. So now you get to see her playing Myra, and she just oh, she's off the chain. Oh my goodness, it's just fun. So I'm I'm really yeah. excited, and uh, it's it'll be exciting to hear David's voice uh, yeah. on the audio. You know, I have to tell you, I miss David so much. I fell down the rabbit hole the other day, Kim looking at everything he's ever done on YouTube. And I watched the memorial, which by the way, you and Chris Spencer hosted his memorial service. Um, I just looking at this picture makes me of David Arnold. Like I miss him so much. You and Chris did a beautiful job hosting it. Thank you. It was, it was, it's still surreal. Like it's unbelievable. Like I, I, I don't, I don't know if one day I'm just going to be in the grocery store like Iyanla around the broccoli and fall out on the floor uh, like she did for her daughter. Like, I don't know when it's going to really hit me it because is. I put him on tour and I think I hadn't seen him. I text him, but I hadn't seen him like we usually hang, hang. I think God was protecting me because I might be in the grave with him. Like, I, I think there was a reason why we kind of stayed, you know, a little separate. He was busy. I was busy. Because, you know, we spent a lot of time together, a lot of breakfasts, a lot, a lot, a lot of time on the road together. And uh, in the last eight months, we really hadn't spent a lot of time together uh, in person. So I think I feel like that was a way of God protecting me to not because I don't know. I, I just don't know what I would do. And I don't think I really have accepted it yet. I'll be honest with you. I'm just, you know, I didn't go down the rabbit hole. Like, maybe that's it. Like, I remember when Gerald died. Gerald Levert. It, Gerald Levert. I could not listen to his music until last year. That was it. like if a song came on the radio, I'd turn it off. You know, if somebody, I, I would not. But now I enjoy his music. Like I listen to it and really like rock to it and be like, all right, Gerald, you better sing that song. But it took a minute, you know, it took a minute. So um, with David, you know, I don't know, you know, where it's going to go. But the lesson is really love your friends and your family because you don't know you do not know by second to second and be kind to one another and forgive like they say don't go to bed mad and if you have a friend that you're upset with and you feel like it's worthy to mend that friendship pick up the phone and call them. pick up the phone then don't wait you know send a text and say you know what we got to talk i don't want to lose your friendship Look at Sherry thinking about some friends she done cussed out. Um, no, she, Sherry's like, whatever. If I left them, I left them. I, but, you know, it's so funny. I don't know if this is indicative of my 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 race, my oh, number one. I don't know why. Yeah, it's it's a number one. No, it's, new talk it is funny. It is funny, though. Um, she didn't need them. <laughs> I love it, Chris. 
Um, I, I, I feel like for me, you're, you're much better at, even if you cut somebody out, you'll see you two together the next month because you don't hold grudges. You really, and I always admire that about you. You're just like, you know, we can come back together. If Kim cut you out for a long time, you, you've done something spectacularly bad. Cause <laughs> really, really good about letting you back in. Me, not so much. When I cut you out, yeah, you gone. I just, I, I don't. Taurus don't play. She don't play. Yeah, I don't know if that's indicative of a Taurus or just um, because John Murray is like that. His birthday is the day before mine. It, yep. His birthday is April twenty yep. first. Mine is the twenty second. And when John y'all don't you play out, with it, y'all don't play with it. Yeah, and I and I so and it's, and Kim has there have been people that I've cut out, and Kim would be like, just call him, and I'm going, nope, nope when I do nope. that. So I still feel like, uh, for me, I feel like when you say, you know, call, I can be cordial to you, but you'll never be allowed back in that place. A close place. Of, yes. At close yes. place. I'll be cordial to you and say, Hey, you know, how you doing? Um, but that's it. I will not. And Kim knows I don't want you at no barbecue. We at, she, she, I don't, she don't play that either. <laughs> I look up and I'll be like, you know, I don't talk to that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Why are they at our barbecue? She, she does. It's so horrible. Incredible. I'm like, oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> and I'm my like, bad. tell them that they got to leave. But how many chances do you give a person? Let me ask you that. You give person more than one chance, though. I you don't cut them lot. immediately. No, I don't cut them immediately. I take yeah. a lot. When it's when it's time to cut, they're gone. To they're gone. And and when I ha and if we're close, oh, I go through it. I'm devastated. I cry. I just. But once I cut, bye. And I don't want to be. And I don't like being two faced. I don't want to be around you. I don't want to be. We could be nice. But but I love about you. So I don't see a need need to mend a friendship because some friendships are not supposed to be mended. Some friendships there's a season. And then the season is not is over. Sometimes we don't supposed we're not supposed to keep people for a lifetime. No, I don't know a what lifetime, that is. Wait, it's a season, a reason, or a lifetime. That's it. That's what you And some people are not supposed to, to go the whole journey with you. Nope. It's nice that like I, I love the fact that my my friends, whether they're in the industry or not in the industry, I've been friends with y'all for a long time. Like I sent you pictures of us and you said, cause we was, boy, we was big as the house, you and me. And you said, damn, we've been friends a long time. Girl, I, I had on a silver shiny suit. That's what I was like, how, and I had some little glasses. I, I, I'm telling you, I was like, how long have we been friends? When I saw that silver sh shiny suit, I was like, that suit looked like it's from the eighties. What the hell? It was old. Suit. I was like, wow, we've been knowing each other a long time. Oh, well, I'm gonna oh. send it to Chris right now. It's probably, it probably won't be. Yeah, uh, it was, it was, it, we've been weird. knowing each other a long time. And, and you know, you forget. Um, so, you know, I, you look back on these friendships and you, you're like, wow. You know, you I think with, mm -hmm. no, I'm sorry. No, I was rambling until you got your thoughts together. Oh, you're so funny. So you see how long we've known each other? It's just a groove we're in. Um, I think that with with David, you've been so busy and you've been everything to everybody in this family. You've been the comforter, the take charge person. David was in our episode 120. Um, you just been everything to everybody. That I don't know if you've had time to sit and process really, because even up until the memorial, you were running around like a chicken with your head cut off. I even said, do you have help? And um, and you don't, you never have quiet time. That's the thing about you. You don't, you really don't have quiet time, you. It's it's always somebody keeping you occupied. And so I think Kim, um, when it really hits you, whether you by yourself or you've gone off on your retreat or whatever, it's gonna, it's gonna hit you. But it's, it, you know, you guys were so fortunate because you shared, like even watching the video that David, David always made videos about you because you got on his nerves. You was always late. You would, you know, David is on time. Yes. Yeah. And everything you did, he was just like, God damn you. You know, not you, but just the situation. And um, he loved you so much. 
and how fortunate it was. Somebody said it, I don't know if it was Rodney Perry, because you had comics get up and people got up and, and, and shared about David. And somebody said that they realized David was somebody to everybody. Everybody had an experience about David that was very different from everybody else's experience. You know, he had experiences with the guys that he was in the military with, yes. you know, that was different from you, that was different from other comics, that was different from me. And watching that memorial, by the way, I was so tired the next day because y'all some ninjas. Y'all don't end on time. You it don't was only three and a half those. hours. It wasn't three hours. But you see me trying to keep Chris on task. And that Chris Spencer, he was going across the stage with his, like a chicken with his head cut off. But I'm sitting here in New York going, do these people realize there are those of us on the East Coast? My eyes was closing. True. That's true. I had two That's shows true. to take and I was like, I'm going to be no good tomorrow, but I'm not going to bed until I see the end of oh. David's memorial. I stayed up uh, wow. and watched it, but I... um. It was it was just very cool to see what David meant to different people, you know. You no, know, a lot of people. You should have seen. I wish the camera would have been the other way also. The number of stand-ups that were in that auditorium. I know. When they said all the stand-up comics stand up in the room, I, it was almost a whole audience. It was unbelievable. DL was sitting over there, Cedric and his wife, and just I'm talking about Myra J. Just every comic we've ever seen, like they were all there and that audience held 600 people. Then we had another uh, 200 people or 300 people out in the lobby. And then they had over 5,000 people watching, I think streaming. So when you say he meant so much to so many people, um, I'm glad yeah. you watched. So it was, I, it was, it was beautifully done. And it was such a trip that you know, it's unfortunate <clears throat> that a situation like this brings out the comedy family, because I think the last time I saw that was when Ricky Harris passed yeah. away. And I remember being at Ricky Harris's memorial and that David, um, uh, Michael Collier got up and spoke about we was in the hood and he didn't want anybody yeah. to steal his coat. And um, it was so wonderful seeing people that you hadn't seen in a long time. Folks came out for Ricky that I had, I thought they was dead. You right. literally, when I saw Marvin, was it Marvin Thomas? I was like, yeah, I thought Thomas. you was dead. Right, right. I've been using your joke for the last seven years because I thought you had died. Girl, you know who now I, I got to not use it. Right. Al Toomer? What, Al Toomer, you know who showed up? Jeff Arnold. You remember the comic Jeff Arnold with the glasses? Yes, girl. girl. He, he came up at the end and said, uh, uh, you think I can get you and Chris for my funeral? Girl, I felt like... <laughs> when I tell you, you and Chris Spencer, <laughs> I thought y'all was at a roast. For yeah, it real. Was, it was, when it was, but you brought, you brought laughter to a situation that would have been so, so sad. Y'all brought that funny and that humor. Uh, Rodney Perry, who wouldn't get off the damn stage. I'd say sure. when Rodney Perry get on the stage, and I love Rodney Perry. That's that's we love Rodney. We love, this we do ninja love will not stop talking. I texted my friend Bone Hampton, who's a comic. He was in the hospital. I said, "When is Rodney gonna get off the stage?" <laughs> I was texting you, going, "Can y'all give Rodney the light?" Rodney think it's his funeral. He's speaking but, from the coffin. No, what? Uh, uh, not from the coffin. But did you hear the first thing out Rodney's mouth? Did you hear the first about thing? About his mouth? thumb with Rodney Perry talked about how big David Arnold's thumb was. I said, do we not see his daughter sitting hmm. there in the front of the stage? His mama's there. But that's Rodney Perry. He's completely inappropriate. At any event, he gets up and speaks at it. Literally. I can name five, five and look up Rodney Perry. He's funny as all get up. But yes. I can name, he used to be the uh, uh, guy on um, um, Monique's, Monique's, Monique's show on BET, yeah. I don't know what his sidekick. title was. He was her sidekick. But yeah. no matter what event Rodney does, he going to be inappropriate. And then he, this is what he said that I thought was hysterical, but was so inappropriate. He says, all oh, y'all been telling Julie and the girls that they going to be there for you. Everybody talking about, Julie, we here for you no matter what. Julie, ain't nobody going to call you back. 
ain't nobody gonna be here for you. Six months gonna go down. They ain't nobody gonna ain't gonna nobody gonna answer the phone. When I tell you, I fell out laughing, and then I got mad. I texted Bone Hampton in the hospital. He's supposed to be asleep. I what said, this ninja else? right here, right in Perry, don't never know what to say. <laughs> and then he started talking about David, David Arnold's thumbs again. He I had me fine. cracking up. He I was, you know, up. Kevin Hart was very good. Kevin Will Patterson, people were really good. So, but Rodney was off the chair. I had gone to the bathroom. So I had missed a lot of what Rodney talked about said. you going to the bathroom. I, I heard. He said it he said Kim is in the bathroom. It depends <laughs> on if she's <laughs> Oh, he talked about you bad. Oh, that mess was so funny. Oh my gosh. And this is why I couldn't turn it off. Cause y'all was so and you were so irritated. You was just like, okay, what are you talking about now? I'm trying to and then you got your reading glasses <laughs> down on your nose. Know. You thought I was irritated. Kim had these reading glasses on looking like Mary Poppins. Like, well, you okay. know, I'm trying to get, get the list and I'm trying to, you know, but okay, fine. What did you wear? Why are you walking like that? Is something wrong with your prostate? I said, Kim, Kim good grief. I was... And then you and um, Chris were really funny. Girl, and so you made it very beautiful. I told Chris to stand at that podium. He want to walk across the, I was so irritated. <laughs> Girl, I oh, just this so world. Good. So and this is this is comedians when you let comedians host. Okay, look at this picture of you. This is a picture of me and you. When look I tell you. you, I said, that <laughs> is the oldest. I was like, we've been knowing each other way too long. I know. I mean, what 19 what? shoulder pads? See, shoulder pads are back. So you they know that suit is old. You can wear this suit right now, Kim. I, if I knew where that suit was, that suit has disintegrated. Trust me. <laughs> I can wear that suit. Right? Look at the clips. I got the little clips up in my head. Look how strong my hairline is. That's why you never know. <laughs> you know I, that's old because look at all that red hair. I have my you hairline know. too because I put that wig behind my hairline. I can't yeah. put a wig behind my hairline now because I don't have one. Right. So you all that all that real hair gone <laughs> it's all gone oh my I'm god so mad. don't even show me a picture like that ever again why would i, I let my hairline leave chris <laughs> that's what and look that picture was when you wore glasses just because they was cute now you wear glasses because we need them <laughs> mm, that's true those glasses weren't even real that is so funny Jerry. that is the best right there those were fake glasses. Cause I thought that was the style and the shiny suit. <laughs> I work I am seed I am seed an event where there were a bunch of twenty somethings all weekend. I saw that outfit like three times. Wow, it's back. It's back in style. With the glasses. These are real. Now you put on glasses. You need them. Look look at all that that bottom part. <laughs> Here, That's Kim. what I hate about reading glasses. It magnifies the bottom part under your eyes, above your nose. Oh, it look crazy. Oh, right. Kim, put okay, your glasses on so you can see this photo better. Really? <laughs> okay. Look at my chin. Oh, damn, we didn't put you up. Look at my look at chin. Our, look, how, look how supple our skin is. Oh, girl, I know. Young eyes. Eyes. But you know, the great thing about having so much fat on my face, it did, boy, no. it wasn't none wrinkling. I'm looking at that hairline. It's still amazing me. Both of us hey. had a hairline. Thick. It was all thick and luscious. It was thick. Oh, my hair was Africa thick. Oh, it looked good. Oh, man. What did we do to ourselves? <laughs> Please. Just like Jeffrey, when he see pictures, he'll, be, he'll go, Mommy, how'd you let that happen? <laughs> what happened? That's what he was oh, saying now. What Joshua happened? saw that picture and said, that's not you. That's what he said. <laughs> That's what he said. Yep. He said, sure that's is. not you. Oh, um, and now we aunties. I don't know what, what. I was oh trying to keep God. us on track. I'm trying to see what else that we need. We talked about Audible. Well, you had, um, you had a few things happen. So you all have been very busy. You're working on a bunch of different stuff. We explained it last week. I think we should give a yeah. shout out. Go ahead. Uh, you want, think we should give a shout out what? Just say thanks to Caroline Ray. For last oh, week. yeah, Caroline Ray and her friend. That's the lady that taught you how to dance. Judine Somerville. Oh, Judine. Judine just went back to New York um, today. So 
you know, um, yeah, I got to send this to you. So she was, I was supposed to have uh, lunch with her uh, today. Look at Judy. Look at Caroline got her breast out. Amazing. I know. She look at Judy. She's that. so, that looks yeah, good. She, that so thank really you. Good. Thank you, Judine and Caroline Ray, because we put that on Chris at the last minute that we could not um, make the podcast. So he really scurried around and found two very funny women to to take our place. It's gotten a little it's gotten a little bit more difficult um, because the Sherry show consumes so much of my time. It's different from doing yeah. a show where you got four people surrounding you because everything is divvied up. Plus, when I did the View. The stuff that I do now, that Barbara Walters used to do because she was she created the show. So it, there's stuff that uh, there's not an hour that goes by that I don't get to or through phone calls every hour about some aspect of the show. This one canceled. This one can't make it. Can you do a post tape? What about this segment? And not complaining. I love it all. But sometimes it makes it really uh, difficult to do the podcast. And then Kim is working on something that she cannot, <laughs> and he puts the number one new talk show up. I love this, Chris. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Chris. Um, Don't forget. Hairline gone. Look at that wig. Hairline just gone. Um, but no hairline whatsoever. All fake hair. <laughs> Don't that forget. have been 20 years ago to be my own hairline. Wig behind it. But, but Kim um, has booked something and it's been very difficult for her as well. We can't announce it yet. But there will be a big, huge announcement coming out about something that Kim has booked in the works and it's major. And I'm so excited for her. And um, as soon as we can announce it, it it's going to be. It's we're, but, yeah, we're working on a, a new show. So it's going to be fantastic. But new show. I was a little weird. Remember, I was a little weirded out by it because I was like, oh no, I can't go to New York. Like, I felt like I need to be on the Sherry show because I felt like I started it with you. I felt like I need to show up at least once a month. We're already at week four. I should have something in the can. Uh, I'm a little stressed but out. But, you know, it's so we had a bunch of segments where it's like um, Sherry and Kim take New York and just funny segments where you see Kim and I because the first segment that we did uh, together, Kim, oh, that Coco Brown's birthday just passed. Who? Uh, about four that? days ago. Who that? Coco Brown. She turned 50. Wait, that ain't Coco Brown. Not with that wig on. That is Coco Brown. We got that's, that's I got that wig on now. I got that wig on now. Oh, that don't look like her from the side. I love that. No, that's Coco because she got her big glasses on. She turned 50 four days ago. Look at Coco. And welcome to the club. Well, that's what I told her. I said, welcome to uh 50, wow. 50 neighborhood terrace. She's excited about it. It's her birthday. But um, we're supposed to do a bunch of stuff, me and Kim, like once a month. But, you know, it's okay because I'm praying for a pickup for the Sherry show. And that means that you will come when you're done with your show. Because right. Kim has a new show, but we can't announce what but it is be, yet. Will you still be filming in January? Uh, no, we're probably going to come back around January 9th. Okay, yeah, because see, I'll finish in December. So, you know, January, I'm going to be all in New York. Talking about, hey! Hey, hey, I'm ready. I'm gonna have on a little- we'll put it in the books. Uh, we got a bunch of segments that you can do. Yeah. So it's okay, you do your thing because it's all about you doing your thing and doing this show, which is, I'm really excited you got a show. That's what I miss a little bit about, you know, when you do a talk show, you don't get to do the acting. And I think a lot of people don't realize that I'm an actress. They, they think, oh, I'm just, because it's been exposed to a lot more people and they go, oh, Sherry's just a talk show host. But I got, you know, I miss not being able to act. Yeah. So, but you, but you so. act. Trust me, you act a fool on your show. <laughs> I saw you in the but day. Like, you getting all your little acting in. Do not be confused. Let me tell you, girl. I had to do a segment where I had to do the mambo, Kim. And because I've been stress eating, so I've gained weight, and I gotta get, I gotta get it together. I just really do. But the you know why? Had, you know why you stress? Wait, first of all, you know why you stress eating? You can only eat what's available unless you're sneaking stuff. So I need to talk to your team. You need to have stuff available. You can stress eat, but stress eat on some turkey, some yogurt with a whole bunch of fruit in it. Excuse me, please don't make me come to New York and snatch you up. It's not, it's- What are you stress with, eating on? What are you eating? It's the Hershey's Kisses. How do you get them? Huh? 
You don't have time to go to the store. DoorDash. Oh, I'm done. I'm taking your credit card. But it's I haven't had them in. Go I ahead. Had so you have to do the mambo. Go ahead. Oh. I haven't had it in six days. I'm, okay, I'm leaving myself. So it is um, because it's, it's it's stressful having a talk show and you being a boss and knowing you're responsible for a hundred people their job. You, you know, it's the thing of great. when you you when we work, Kim. Especially being responsible, and it, the name is my name. The show is my name. It's like you don't get to go out in front of the people and have a bad day. You don't get to go out and go, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not feeling so good today. You got to go out and do a full performance. It's like when we do stand up, you know, and and you can't. It, it, Chris with this number one new talk show. I never thought exactly something would get on my nerves more. It's funny as hell. <laughs> I know there's so it's many like viewers. It's funny as hell. There's so many viewers right now just livid with me as well. I love it. He's putting his poster up. They gonna get tired of it. All right, already. We know. Thank you, Chris. Um, but you can't the show must go on is really the thing about it. No matter how you're feeling, I could have broken up with my boyfriend right before the show and be, you know, you gotta matter. go out there and do a full performance. And we, you and I are perfectionists. Yeah. You know, it's like when we do stand up, it doesn't matter what happens beforehand. When they said, welcome to the stage, Kim Whitley gotta, or Sherry Shepard, you got to go out there and bring it. So um, it, it's, it's, it's the stress eating. And I haven't been able to work out in a month because I normally work out from six to seven, but I got to get up at five in the morning to get ready to get to the gym by six. Um, but that, I'm supposed to be in a makeup nice. chair. I'm supposed to be in a makeup chair at seven at seven so i gave up stand up that was really hard for me because um i was trying to get to the clubs at night but being you know having to get up at at um early in the morning to be in the makeup chair to do a show i wasn't getting any sleep and i was I'm so tired what caroline and everybody else just told me same what? thing i was trying to do stand up last night people do stand up to get to where you are it's okay you can do stand up later. We go yeah, out every up. night to get to where we are. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead and wear yourself out. And, 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 well, and I had to stop. Yes. Not, you, you know, I, I, the one thing I have to say about David Arno, I lived for David Arno when he would say to me, um, Sherry, you're a pure stand up. You're like me. Yes, you, you are, are like always, him. I you live. love stand up. I love stand when I do when I, stand up. You you love stand up. I do stand I up. I love it so much. And when I would be at the clubs and David would because I would always tease David and go, I'm better than you. Because David would be hitting them clubs. But I literally would go to the, to the laugh factory, the comedy store, and the improv, three clubs a night, and I would end it with the comedy act. So I would do four clubs a night three times a week. That's 12 times I would get on stage and I would yeah. do it on the weekends. I love doing stand up. And so when David would be there. And he would say that to me. I, I live for those compliments. And so to give it up and say, because somebody said to me, you got to focus on the dream that you've been having all these years. Like be present to the dream that came true. And you can't be present when you're tired because you've been in comedy clubs all night. Like that's not going away. And they also said, they're trying, you do stand up to get to where you are now. And exactly. so I had to let that go. Because I wasn't getting any sleep. And literally, I need to be in that bed by 9 o'clock. So it's yeah. been very hard, difficult to work out in the early mornings. And but what about the, Saturday morning or Sunday? Like Saturday morning is the great thing is about I walk three miles because I drop really? Jeffrey off at his basketball camp. And I walk back home. And that's about, that's about three miles. So I do do that. I walk up a lot of stairs because we're in the brownstone. Right. But... Um, I just, I need to just get focused and try to find a time. Maybe I just got to have somebody. Maybe I just got to ask Andre, can we do it on YouTube if I can get him woke up? Uh, no, to... you could because I asked him, to say, I'm doing the same thing. So I'm same thing. My schedule's done. I was working out every day. I was feeling great because it does give you a certain amount of energy. So I just yeah. asked Andre, I said, in my dressing room, I got a 30 minute or an hour, maybe lunch. I said, can I call you on FaceTime? You have a routine. I'm taking some weights with me, a couple weights in my dressing room and I'm just going to get it. So maybe you could do it in the morning or something. And he just, I think that's what I'm going to do. Quick. Even and I'm you ain't going to do an hour, we're talking 20 minutes. Get your heart rate up and get it in. I'm telling you, you'll make a difference. 
but even you have if to get I run up the stairs. Yeah, but you, uh -huh. even if you run up, tap the steps, run back down, but you don't want to wake everybody up. Come on now. Uh, this, this is the thing. If you, it takes, a, you had to get your talk show up and running, just like this show. I got to know my schedule and understand. So I had to let the workout go. I was like, you know, everything, you don't know your schedule. Now the show is up and running. You understand where these pockets of time, everything's going to smooth out. But in the beginning, you got to give it a hundred percent or you're not going to have that sign. Chris hit it. If you don't give it everything that you got, you can't have that. Boom. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chris. You can't. Can I tell you, Beautiful. But can I tell you what's like so the, the number one new talk show? Can I tell you? What's so, can you please take that down, Chris? Hang oh on here. God. Oh, sorry. Here, let me fix it. You got to give one hundred and twenty percent. You silly, Chris. Uh, Oprah has texted me a few times because she watches the show. The show. And she said, I've been watching your numbers. This is the last, can I read this to you real quick? I um, don't know. Are you sure careful, you? Sherry, be careful. careful. I know what I'm supposed to read and what I'm not supposed to read. Do you? Do you? Yes. You be and I, only, I, only, I, only, I only tell people that you pick your nose. Nobody Kill. else. Hey. I said on the air, y'all, one time I ran out of, uh, oh, can I tell y'all the story before I read this uh -huh. Oprah thing? I was... Here's the deal. I got a lot of stories in my head that are funny, but some days I'm just tired and I don't, and I just, I worry and I go, oh, I don't have anything funny. And I got to trust that my funny, John gets on me all the time because he says, my number one line is, I don't do improv. Kim does that. That's what Kim is good at. And he'll say, Sherry, it's a muscle that's just got to be strengthened. David was getting on me about that. Um, but I, there was one day, I just didn't have nothing. I didn't have nothing. And um, I was, none of this, the hot topics was interesting <laughs> to me. And so I don't know, I, I started telling this story about, we were talking about when you FaceTime people. And I said, oh yeah, cause me and Kim be FaceTiming each other. And sometimes we forget that we FaceTime, we don't have our wig on, you know, Lunel be naked in the bathtub. When we FaceTime, she'll be taking a bath, you know? And um, so the thing was, is when we do the FaceTime, I pick my nose because I forgot that we was FaceTime. So I was digging in my nose. But I'm not going to say that to America that I was digging in my oh, nose. Oh, I know. You told them I was digging in my <laughs> nose. Oh, I saw it. Yes. This improv funny, funny, ha ha. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the number one new talk show. <laughs> Very funny. Hey, let me tell you something. Well, I was, you got to do what you got to do in the end. Something. I'd rather, what is the word? What is that saying? I'd rather go ahead and do it and apologize later. And that's what instead I did. And thank God. Right, instead of thank, ask for permission. I I thank Jesus that I got a friend who was, was okay with it. Because I show sat in that chair and I said, and so Kim was digging in her nose. <laughs> And the crowd cracked up. And I said, oh, I'm going to have to go apologize to Kim. But it was okay because when Jennifer Lewis came out and sang that daggone song about, I talked to your friend Kim, boom, 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 and Kim told me you was in love with me. And then Kim told me you like to eat the Hurst kisses in secret. I was like, this bitch, I'm going to kill her. I'm going to kill her. So for, look at that. In the middle I, of me crying. Payback. payback. Right that fast. Look at that. <laughs> Girl, can I tell you, Payback, I was listening to the, the Big Payback by James Brown. Do you know uh -huh. how mad he was at women? You ever listen to that song? I he did. said, I'm mad. I got to have revenge. My woman took my money. I'm mad. Oh <laughs> he was, I listened to oh that song. God. And I was I like, damn. You know, he the one that they chased him through like seven states because he was beating his women. But he was, he was just like, you know, my girlfriend. Man, <laughs> say what did and he made man? millions singing like that? How about that? He made millions, mad as heck. Anyway, mad. so I wanted to make sure we get we got your essence.com. Do you see coverage. how good Oprah looks? How she lose that weight? You know, I'm about to text her myself. She, she looks good, she looks so good. She looks really good. You tell Oprah, Kim said, call her, she need to understand how she can get that small. I ain't telling her nothing. You probably, you got her number. I just get texts. She okay. said, she said, you. she said she, she, she knows the numbers, the ratings. 
She said, you're doing so well in a world where it's hard to get eyeballs. Keep it going. You're fulfilling the daily mission, making it fun. That's my mission. I'm very clear. Mm-hmm. Like somebody asked me yesterday, uh, I was at a party in Detroit and they said, Sherry, I got a topic for you. We got to cover this about, you know, black people doing this and they not. And in the political, and I said, Mm-mm. my show is a respite from all of that. Like in the midst of everything going on, political, social economics, I want you to feel like, but Sherry's going to bring me a little bit of relief. Like, I'm just clear on that. I'm, you can watch CNN, Fox News, The View, Trevor Noah, Rachel Maddow, yeah. The Wolf Blitzer. There's so many shows you can watch to get that viewpoint and that opinion of somebody or whatever's going on. But when you come to Sherry, I want you to laugh because you see Kim Whitley and me walking away and we're funny. I want you to laugh. I want you to just like feel better than when you came and go, I can face this day because laughter has done good for my soul. Yes. I don't know how how long that season will be. You know, sometimes I think about Kim. um, You remember when they had, um, I'm lost without you. Um, the, the, The two big guys, uh, do you remember that name? Um, you talking about the big boys, the fat boys, the yeah. men at large? Men at large? No, well, not men at large. Who was it? Um, oh, uh, silence Ruben is deadly. Sutter, this is horrible that we're going through all the big dudes. This is horrible. Please forgive us. Uh, tell, um, they say, it? talk while I find it, you and Chris. Wait, uh, Chris, who are we Ruben Stutter, Luther Vandross, no. I'm going through all the Okay, well, uh, give me give me large. one line from give me one line from the song. Die from the without song. you. I would die without you, boys to men. Uh, no. I would die without you. Somebody at home, they know somebody's trying to, to I know Chris. PM PM Dawn. PM Dawn. PM oh, Dawn. You said big. PM Dawn ain't big. One of them was big. He died of diabetes. He was oh. big. Oh, I gotta get off of them. I can't believe she. <laughs> I don't mean to say it like that, but he was big. Oh my God. Okay. Sing the first couple, sing the first verse of one of PM Dawn's songs. I dun, love PM Dawn. I wish you were lying here. Na, 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 ta, na, na, oh, PM Dawn, they used to jam. I love PM Dawn. Yeah. But we can't my sing on a podcast. We can't my sing well, you podcast. you can, you know? Sherry can't. I can't oh. say the whole thing because we're going to get pulled. But isn't oh, it a man? Na, na, I got na, na, it. Na, na, <laughs> no, I got it. I got it in my thing. The best you can't play it. I, no, you can't no. Play I, got, I got it. I'll die with, I'll die with you, out you or die with you. Push Stop up me. your reading glasses. You'll see it better. <laughs> oh, I got it right here. Stop it. I don't know why it won't. Here it is. I die without you. Is that what you want okay, to know? Okay, so you know, you know the song, right? Yes. Die without you. Okay. So sometimes I think of my show as like, you I don't know how you Hold on, let me, let me mute you. What is just, what are you doing now? She muted herself. You muted yourself, Kim. <laughs> she, is she singing the song on mute? She's, she's picking it up so she can sing it back to you right now. She's playing it so she can play it back to you. It looks like she's playing a game of charades. Mm-hmm. Well, most days she is. <laughs> Unmute yourself. <laughs> Will you unmute yourself? You're... Is it my time? Remember that? Yes. Okay. I'm ready to die. Yes. It's my time. Remember was, that? That was worth it's all that muting. It's, it's my turn. It's my time. Why? Oh, no, 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 no. Hold on. No, 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 no. That was time. Yeah. That is my time. Okay, we sound my, very different. With okay, I die without you. I would. You want me to just say the lyrics? I'll say the lyrics. No, I, we, no, no. It's not the lyrics. Hold on, it's hey Chris, the- you get that stuff. Don't let me. Don't let us get off this podcast without me pushing my cousin for people to vote tomorrow. Okay? Oh, I got your stuff. Are you ready? Okay. okay. No, wait, wait. wait minute, I want to. Your cousin? Who? No, to somebody. Who are you talking about? No. Oh. Who? Who are you talking about? Like, that's a conflict of interest. Oh, you talking about? Uh, oh, you talking about the the, the uh, Karen Bass? Did you do your Did you do your uh, absentee ballot? I know you better. I know you better vote from from uh, New York. I know you better. Yeah, I can do that. 
I thought I was a New York resident. Oh, are you? Do you have a New York license plate? License? Not Did yet. You? Exactly. Not so you're not. So Kim, I don't want to get in no trouble. I'm doing a talk show from New York and I'm voting for Karen Bass in LA. I don't want to get no trouble. You're a California resident. Sherry. I don't want to go to jail. Kim goes on NB- MSNBC. I think she's credible. Thank you. Yeah, I'm I incredible. Thank you, you was very on much. MSNBC? I was on MSNBC uh, this Saturday with, uh, oh, look at us, Tiffany Cross Show. And that's uh, 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 Ali uh, Sadiq. Ali Sadiq. Yep. Very funny. We were on there talking about the Trevor Noah. Ali Sadiq from Tony, Tony, Tony. No. Okay. <laughs> you talking about Raphael Sadiq? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Make a note: the Damn. white the white guy in St. Louis just corrected Sherry <laughs> Shepard on a Raphael Sadiq. Okay, ready, ready. Here we go, y'all. Yes, I was on MSNBC, and I said, put up my new podcast about the Kim Show, and they put up two funny mamas, and I was so <laughs> in shock. <laughs> I got to. Did you get? Did you say Chris? <laughs> Are you serious, Kim? I got to him. I got to him. I, I, I couldn't even answer a question. I was like, uh, 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 yes, uh, Trevor Noah, uh, because they were supposed to be pushing out the Kim. I should have said Audible Original and shouldn't have called the podcast, but that's what we've been calling it. So I will take partly responsibility on that. But okay. So you so said you we were promoting Kim the Audible and you said put up, and they, you said the podcast and they put up two funny moms. Yes. Yep. And I'm mm-hmm. gonna, and, oh my gosh. And that's why Lena wait they smiling. <laughs> that's why, right. Oh, Lena, Lena about to straight kill me. So I I I I gotta block her for about a week because oh she's coming out. Oh okay, listen. Gosh. I die without you, PM Dawn. Uh it is my turn to wish you were lying here. I tend to dream you when I'm not sleeping. It is my turn to fictionalize your world or even imagine your emotion. Tell myself anything. So why would this why is this important? Why is this important? Okay, you you're, you're overthinking. Just go water my shirt. You're overthinking it. Kim. But what were we talking about? Why are we looking up these lyrics? We weren't you're looking up the lyrics. I didn't you know. You say it. it. Okay. Okay. To die without you. you. Oh, I die without you. I, if a man said that, let me tell you something. That'd be my man. A man said, I would die without you. And he mm-hmm. wasn't a stalker. Oh, that that's is him. him gone. Is he big? Is he a big guy? He's a big guy. Is he gone? Is he gone? Yes, he passed away from diabetic complications. I just told you that. Don't act like you got a talk show and now you know everything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. <laughs> No, the number one new talk show. <laughs> yeah, number one new talk show. Say okay. it right or don't right. say it at all, okay, Kim? Okay. Say it right or don't say it at all. Okay, all right. Listen, Can listen. Can I tell you why I'm using PM Don? Okay, why? Because I was saying, for me, it, I want it, it's a season of I just need you to laugh to escape. It's escapism, yes. the Sherry show. And okay. and I want to inspire you along the way. I want to inspire you and challenge you, but I want you to feel good. And I don't know how long this season will last. And I appreciate every every day that it's on and that we got this rating. This is very God ordained. Um, but I think about PM Dawn, how PM Dawn, there was a there were those days of PM Dawn and um who say Mr. Wendell? See, this is I'm so tired of the trivia questions on the podcast today. Okay, well, we don't have to, don't look it up. But the same Mr. people who say Mr. Wendell, like that was a that was a whole genre of music, Kim, before mm-hmm. hard rap, Arrested hardcore de- rap. Arrested rap development, hit. sorry. Arrested development. Yeah, that was the sound. I knew of, that. And, and everybody loved it. And do you remember PM Dawn was on stage and the people who sang, you down with OPP, yeah, you yeah. know me. What was that group? Naughty by Nature. Naughty by nature. Look, look at Chris one and of Jim. The, Okay, so Naughty by Nature, PM Dawn was on stage singing Lana. And Naughty by Nature got up on the stage. I think it was in Brooklyn. And they slapped one of them, whoever was the singer, off the stage. And that was the end of that kind of 
music. And then you had the rap come in. Because somebody court. slapped somebody, it ended the whole genre. You know what? It just, your yeah, it just was, that was the, that was kind of the end of <laughs> that kind of Mr. Window. And it was the heart, it was the NWA. It was the hard rap. It was that, you know, coming in, uh -huh. you know? And so I don't know. So they didn't have the internet. one talk show and now she <laughs> feel like she is Barbara Walters. See, this is the problem. Now the slap around the world and ended all the genre. I'm through with you. Number one That's... new talk show. Number one new talk show. Sherry. They didn't have the internet back then, Kim. It, it, Kurt Cobain did it to yeah. did it to glam I'm not rock. Gonna drop no more deep Wait, stuff on me. No, no, no this is good. You, you know, know what? I do miss. I do miss you doing stand up. I miss us doing stand up together. Chris, are we going to do St. Louis? When are we going out? To don't do play, our... don't play me like this. I could have this thing set up yesterday. Yes, absolutely. You want dates by the end of the week? You got it. Let's make it happen. St. Louis, two funny mamas. We'll rock it out. We'll film stuff. It'll are, be a party. Don't test me. Do not test me. Are you producing a stand-up show now? Yes. Why? Because I I heard you were. <laughs> Kimberly. <laughs> Okay. Sherry, she's got a TV show now. She's on her game. We do. We've got a new uh, comedy show jumping out. Can I tell people about it, Sherry? Do you mind? Yeah. Yeah, yeah check this out. I said out. you can't. Why you got to ask Sherry? Because she got a number one new talk show. Well, <laughs> shall I? <laughs> there it is again. <laughs> Oprah, Oprah texts her pretty regularly. So I think oh, I... No. I think I better. I okay, okay I Chris, hit it, hit it. Oh, check this out. This is. Let's see what size we got here. Uh, let's go a little bigger. All right, this is our first one, November 3rd. We've got a weekly comedy series it's on Thursday. I'll be hosting this. Uh, we're kicking it off. Precious J, Ray Rowry, Will O'Donnell, Larry Green, 12 bucks. It's a, it's a weekly show. It's a pro room. You guys will love it whenever you come here. You can get tickets on Metro Ticks. Thanks to Botanist for making that happen. So excited to do that. Excited oh, to get so back. you're producing it. Yeah, I I host them. I'll host these and then produce these. And we have so many talented people here. And we get lucky. We have people that pop through. So you want a professional, solid room. And that's what this is. Oh, very cool. Congratulations. Yeah. It's great. So, yeah. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, Sherry. Yeah, it'll be a good time. November 3rd. Uh, good. Here in November St. Louis. 3rd. And what's the name of the place? Central Stage. It's a new venue that we're uh, programming. So it's great. It's okay. right up the street. Yeah, it's a uh, really cool like, room. Starts so with what's the website? Yeah, what's uh, the website again? Get tickets at metrotix.com or midcoast.media slash central stage. Oh, well, congratulations. Yeah, it's a good time. I always have fun. And if you, if, you, if you set the bar high, you guys know how it goes. If you set the bar high, people come in, give their best material, people come back. It's always fun. Absolutely. That's the way it is. Can I say one thing? Can you, can I thank Please. Lena Waite? Because I know she watches Two Funny Mamas. She does. Uh, thank you for your flowers, Lena. They were beautiful. Like all these oh, flowers were coming to me. They didn't have a card attached. So oh, how did you know, you know Lena? I did you know Lena gave you flowers. We, because we finally got in touch with the card, the people who sent the flowers. And then you got to go through a whole thing because they don't want to tell you who sent the flowers because they don't know if you're a wife trying to check up on your man. And they oh. won't tell you. So we got you got to call every day. Now finally, I got to call and say who I am. Then they tell me. So Lena wakes sent me some like amazingly beautiful flowers. And thank you, Lena. Sherry. I sure appreciate she sends it. great flowers. Sherry, can I give you a, just a quick note? In that mm -hmm. instance, you could have really ticked Kim off by saying, Oprah texted me to tell me that Lena Waithe sent me flowers. <laughs> you ever heard a saying, don't poke the sleeping bear with ADHD? Right. Don't poke the bear. Don't with poke ADHD. The bear. I love that quote. You, you do just never want to poke ADHD? the sleeping That's funny. <laughs> yes. This particular sleeping bear has ADHD. It's just dangerous. <laughs> okay, we're almost done. Literally here. Um, literally want to thank you guys for being so patient. We're trying to figure this out with our podcast. Um, but there was some like news that was coming out that we wanted to talk about. When I was telling Kim, these marriages are breaking up. Tamara, no, not Tamara, Tia Murray uh, filed for divorce from Corey Hardrick after 14 years. Now we both know them both. Giselle Bunchen is like, allegedly getting an attorney uh f with tom brady they've been together um miguel the singer his wife of three years nazamine i think her name is uh, they've been together 18 years but married for three and 
they're, you know, all talking about divorce. I wanted to ask you a question that makes me sad, but again, we don't, the thing about it, I've learned at this age, you, I don't trust nothing I see on Instagram, first of all, because Instagram is a very heightened world of happiness. A lot of times with people's relationships. And unless you're in that house, you don't really know what's going on behind closed doors. Do you agree? Yeah, I was talking to you. You was talking to me? I didn't mute. My, my cousin, I was trying to tell you. You don't understand. You know, my family be tripping. My cousin, I got this little book. Okay, oh, all right. Was... Okay, I'm coming back. I'm sorry, uh, Sherry. Gigi, I got to get off the phone. You gave me the information. We're going to tell the people. All right. She told me, I love you, Sherry. All right, bye. Love you too, Gigi. Sherry, Sherry has exactly <laughs> one co host, and Kim said, Me? <laughs> I'm asking her a question and she's looking at me like, who are you talking to? PM Girl, Dawn? Is this PM okay. Dawn? No, okay. okay. So what was your question? I'm ready. <laughs> I heard it. I heard it. What's your question? <laughs> repeat, it, repeat it back for the audience. I said with all of these people going through divorces, mm -hmm. I don't even remember what I asked her. What did mm -hmm. I ask her? Do you think it's the culture of what she said, Chris? Come on. She, oh, she, Instagram. Thank you. I said, I don't believe anything I see on Instagram because I think that Instagram is like a heightened form of everybody's happy. But you really don't know what's going on behind closed doors because we always see these couples that be like, they're happy. Then they get in trouble filing for divorce or somebody and they cheated or they, da, 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 da. Like you just, I just I take think, Instagram. I think Instagram is, is that. I think, I think Instagram is the the fairy tale of what's, you know, of everybody's life. Because even, you know, you're the only person that goes on Instagram with no makeup on. No one else no. does that. No, other people no. do. Uh, a few, a few, but that's what I'm saying. Instagram is the, oh, look at my life. Look at my perfect kids. Look, I'm not gonna say any names, but there's some people I'll be like, come on now, come on, please stop. Yeah, I mean, we even go back to when Bow Bow, Bow Wow did the, the private jet picture or the this and that picture. We we show stuff that we want people to believe how yeah, we found that it was Photoshop. Right. <laughs> Damn, I didn't know it was that. But this is the truth. <laughs> we accept it and we love it and we heighten it. And we think people live that way because we're putting a story out. That's what we do. And people, and it was so funny as I crack up when people come, they used to come to my house, my other house, and people was like, We thought you was rich. I, I never got on people saying, I was like, uh, or I drive, you know, my favorite car, my Ford Flex. And people are like, you ain't got no range. You ain't got no biz. Why you? And people will say that to you. And I was like, you know, I've had a range. I've had all those cars, but this is my favorite car, Ford Flex. And I used to try to live like that for other people, but I live for me. And I, now my response is, but you should see my bank account, you know, because I don't spend the money on frivolous things. I get, I live how I like to live. I don't need a whole bunch of, you know, you know, those like fur coats and diamonds. This is about the only diamond I got right here, unless a man wants to buy me something. But I don't, you know, we don't, you don't do that. I don't do that. Um, so I think Instagram is that. It is the story people want to portray and put out there. It's interesting because I think that's why so many people are, you know, when you hear about, uh, uh, Tia Murray and Corey, because it's always, and I'm not saying that Tia has been lying about anything. I think you put out happiness because literally if we put out what we was really going through on Instagram, you'd be like, damn, oh my gosh. You know, if, if you put out everything that you literally go through, raising Joshua by yourself, um, dealing with I'd the time jail. Jail. I mean <laughs> the times you <laughs> needed to go to jail. <laughs> But dealing with the times, you know, we as actresses, we go through periods where we don't work and we are unemployed and we're trying to figure out how we're going to pay the light bill yep. and how we're going to take pay these bills. But, you know, what you see is us always working. But they're literally, uh, you could do a, a gig last year and it airs now. But in between those, in between the gig you did last year and it airing now, you know, the three things you did last year, you're not working for six months, but we're not gonna we're not gonna put that on Instagram, cause y'all not gonna want to hear all of that. 
you tell your friends. So uh, we put out a heightened version where we're having fun. Kim puts out when she's in the kitchen, she be dancing right. in the kitchen. Talking about what she eating. Oh, look, oh, we got a new Weight Watchers food to eat this week. You know, and it's like, and it entertains you because that's part of our brand. Yeah. It, we, you know, we use Instagram to entertain. So I, again, I say with the, with the people who are now getting divorced, we don't know what was going on in their house, what led up to this, what, what is taking place. And it made me sad because I like Corey and I like Tia. Yes. I like Tia a lot. I don't know Giselle and Tom and what was going on with them. I don't know Miguel. But the question I did have was, do you believe in a soulmate? Yes. You do? I believe you have more you. than one soulmate or you just, there is one soulmate for you? One. I believe there's a soulmate and then there's a a twin flame, you know, there's a flame. Uh, I believe there's different levels, but I believe, yeah, soulmates. I do believe in some, I, and I don't know if you go through this life, you might not ever meet your soulmate. What if you never, ever, ever cross paths and hook up? I, I believe that sometimes your soulmate might not get to you or you might not get to them. Why do you think that? circumstances, bad mistakes. I, you know, say uh, my soulmate uh, is at a club or somewhere and I, you know, me, I'm busy. Or a lot of times people, I'm at a place and I see a man looking at me and he wants to get over to me, but I'm so busy signing autographs and taking pictures and this and that and circumstances that I never got to meet him. I think maybe that what people believe, if that's your soulmate, they're going to get to you possibly, but maybe they're going to get to me in another lifetime. I believe we go through several lifetimes. Maybe my soulmate gets to me in my fifth lifetime. I'm not sure. Um, have I ever been with a soulmate? Possibly. I'm not sure. There he is. There he is, right? When I tell you Chris is on it today, when I tell have I ever you, been with a soulmate? As Chris's picture pops Chris up next. Picture pops up. There's my soulmate, but his hair is much shorter, so I don't know if that's true. Um, do you believe a soulmate can have? Do a you believe with you've you? ever been with your soulmate? I don't know if love. I believe in a soulmate. I, I I believe that there might be mates that are good for your soul for a time. Right. We can agree to disagree. I, I don't, I, you know, because I hear soulmate so much, like I met my soulmate, but then three years later, y'all divorce. Right. But you know who I think so, when I say soulmate, to be honest with you, like, I think you're my soulmate. I know that's, that probably shocked you. Uh, yeah, that did. That's a lot of pressure. And I don't know if, yeah, look at, like, you. <laughs> you can we tell, so I, had the, I had the male energy. I had the male energy in the group. Yeah. I don't know if I want to take on that label. But you have a lot of soulmates. I, 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 I think, but you know what? I really think a soulmate in, in, in a male, like in a. I'm going to start calling you out of my show. My soulmate, Kim Whitley. <laughs> right, right. You're, it's your calling. best, it's your best friend. I think a soulmate is the person that you feel completely safe with and trusted. And you're right. When people say soulmate and then they end up in divorce, I believe that, like, I feel like Cookie Johnson is Magic Johnson's soulmate. Because when you go through certain things with a person, but you stand by their side, because that was a devastating situation. I believe that when your with soul is getting time, uh, HIV, yes, and going through and, all of that, and she stuck by his side, and they're very yes. happy. And she could have divorced know. him and got all that money, but right? She stayed. She she was tied, soul ties. So I I believe in those kind of things. Like wow, her best friend, whoever she was tied to him, and you know. That's how that goes. Those are my beliefs. 
Uh, will it ever happen to me? Who knows? It might, it might not. Um, Do you think like a soulmate could be like, he could be just, he's, he's a mate that's good for your soul in this, in a season. Like, do, or do you believe, like I asked the audience when I was talking about Tia uh, and Corey and Miguel and N Nezanine and um, Tom and Giselle. And I think I even brought up Ime Uduko and Nia Long because they've been together 10 oh. years. They, they're common law married. Uh, wow, that's okay. Yep. I think 10 years is common law married. But um, do you think that when you feel like it's over because i asked the audience i said do you feel like you know like marriage is supposed to be till death do you part till the end do you, they no matter what you can stay and work it out make a lot of them clap like yeah you know sometimes it i was telling the story of my friend who's married and it's been a, a very very unhappy marriage for a long time you know, so when is it wow. time to say, this is not good? It's not good for the kids. It's not good for me. And I think I got to, I think I got to, for my own self, leave. Um, or do you believe it's like till death do us part, no matter what? No, well, not unless it, it can kill you. Then it will be death do us part. You can stress out in a relationship. Some people don't have the strength to leave, the desire they rather sometimes what I've heard from even men and friends of mine, you know what? I better I rather be with the devil. You know the devil. You know, you know it's easier. Hi, hi, son. Hi, what, what's happening? This is what's happening here. Say hi, oh, Auntie. Oh, Shirley. Joshua, Hello. good grief, Joshua. I miss you so much. I miss you too. I love Look how you dug in his ribs so he could say something. No, I haven't, I haven't touched him. I have not touched him at all. I was looking at his He's little face. He's gotten so big. He has gotten big. You need to go put, did you wash your face? You starting to turn into a teacher, teenager. Go wash your face with that little soap I got upstairs, okay? And did you lotion your body? And why'd you put on clothes? You just took a bath for bedtime. You're fully dressed. <laughs> and you need to drink some more. Go drink some water. Your, whites are, your lips are white. That means you're dehydrated. Uh, go drink a big thing of water right now. Matter of fact, stand at this door. I want to see you drink a bottle of water Why right now. Drinking a bottle of water in the back. In the back, I want to. I want to see it. I want to see it finished, because you won't be at a boo boo. Okay. Okay. Love to you telling all of his business. I know you're not rolling your eyes at me. We're about to have a talk anyway. Let me get off with Auntie Sherry. That's right. We got a big no, talk. Right. I know. I already know. I, I always can tell when you're losing Kim, and now she's no. got to go talk to Joshua about no, some stuff. I, yeah, uh huh. We're gonna have that talk. So go ahead, get your last bit of fun out. Okay, Kim, sorry. Kim. Like, no, no, keep doing the podcast. Before, right? Let me. I forgot. It's time, honey. And and uh, 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 Pam's supposed to come over to read the script with me, so these girls won't be running circles around me on this set. So, yeah. So uh, and I have to actually have to watch three uh, TV shows. Right. We got to get off. Yes. But wait, I got to promote my cousin. Uh, you oh, got yes. it, Chris. The the link and everything. Did you, yeah, you I'll tell everybody about it if you'd like. Is that cool? Yes, go right ahead. All right, so check this out. If you're if you're watching, if you're watching, you got all this information. Fab over forty. Vote Giselle. Is it Gathings or Gay Things? Yes, Gathings. Giselle Gathings. This Giselle is my Gathings. Cousin. Yep. Voting begins on the tenth, which was a few days ago. As you see this, here's the message. Greetings, fam. New Beauty Fab over 40 voting starts tomorrow, which is happening. Please share link and vote daily. Let's go. The link will be in the description of this podcast on YouTube. You can uh, support Giselle, who's very important to Kim. Thank you for the support, shares, votes. Make it happen. Kim, look at you helping out another. This is a support of black business moment. Yeah, when I tell y'all, and then my cousin, she, yep, yeah, this is support of black business right here. Vote, uh, please, but we got to give the, what's the link? Did you put the link up or did you tell the people where to go? Chris? Yes, you can go. <laughs> Fab, I, I the, would listen. It's, it's, a, it's a very long website. So if you check it out, um, the link is in the comments and in the description, and we'll put that up as well okay. where you can see it uh, 40 .com. nobody's right. gonna be able to remember it if we post it right. up but yes it is in the links and uh, in both the audio description and the video description yes and you can vote every day so it resets it's beautiful and you know 
and look at her. That's why I said I didn't hardly recognize her. I ain't seen her in so long. She ain't used to look like that. I said, go, girl. That's my cousin, uh, Gigi, Giselle uh, Gathings. And listen, she said, when I tell you, she done sent me a text that's about seven pages long with all the information. Gigi, I'm not saying all that. Y'all, please vote for my cousin so she can win. All right. There we go. She loves you. There was also something I wanted to share, right? And I'm going to let you go, Kim. It's Kids in the Spotlight. Have you worked with them? No, but uh, I would kids, love to. Kids in the Spotlight. Hold on one second, because they wanted me to um put something. You know, I'm probably going to have to do it at, at a different time, because that this is last minute. And so it's... Uh, it's okay. We can, Sherry, can, you can send it and send me afterwards. You all can get out of here, be on with your night, and we'll have the information available, and you can plug it the next time you're on. That sounds good. Okay. Ladies, big smiles I, into the screen if you don't mind. Or walk away. Did she get up? Did she get up? Did Sherry Shepard just get up and walk out the seat? No, because I told you, you know you why don't, she did. I, don't, I, gotta, I gotta fold up all of this stuff. All right, and that's I'm, right. She got all, <laughs> all the laundry, boy. You can be, wait, Chris, get ready to hit it. You can be the number one new talk show, <laughs> but you still gotta do your laundry. I think Thank I you, know. everybody. Two funny mamas. Two funny mamas. Two funny mamas.